Draw the shear and bending moment diagrams for the beam. Step one, figure out what your reactions are. So I will have at a pin, AX and AY, I'll have all of my distances noted, all of my external forces included, and at a roller I'm going to have BY. Some of the forces in X tells me that AX equals zero. Some of the forces in Y says AY plus BY is equal to eight, nine. And the sum of the moments at, oh say, A, gives me three times two plus six times four minus BY times six equals zero. Once I've done that, I can solve for AX equals zero, AY equals four, and BY equals five pounds. Note, N is going to be equal to zero throughout, so I'm going to neglect N in my intermediate diagrams. Now, by definition, I can consider any individual piece of the beam. And for each of those pieces of the beam, I want to find out what V and M are. Remember the principle, if one piece of the beam is in equilibrium, then all pieces, if the beam is in equilibrium, then every piece has to be in equilibrium. So I want to consider little chunks of the beam. I need to have three chunks because as I'm going from the left-hand end, nothing will change until I get to x equals 2 feet. And then nothing will change past that until I get to x equals 4 feet. And then nothing will change until I get past that until I get to x equals 6 feet. So what I know is that my individual diagrams, as I do them, I can go from x equals 0 to 2, and then from x equals 0 to 4, and then from x equals 0 to six. In each of these cases, x has to go all the way from the left-hand end. You can't include only the middle piece unless you want to include the internal forces on both ends of your piece. I'm going to have my four-pound load on all of my free body diagrams. I will have the three-pound load on this diagram, not on the first one, but I will include it on the second one because I know that x is greater than two. And on the third one because I know again that x is greater than two. On the third one, I also have to include my six pound load because now X is greater than four. In each of my cases, I need to put on my internal forces following all of your sign conventions very carefully. So I have V acting down because this is the left-hand portion of my beam and M acting counterclockwise for all of these cases. Now I'm gonna take the sum of the forces in the Y direction for each of my situations. For the first one, V is equal to four. That's the only two things that I have. On the second one, I have V equals four minus three, or V is equal to one. On the third one, I have four acting up, three acting down, six acting down, and V acting down. So V is going to be equal to negative five. Take the sum of the moments at break. I always take the sum of the moments there because it's convenient. Here I have M equals four X, four pounds acting at a distance of X. If I take the sum of the moments at the break for my middle piece, I have four pounds acting at a distance of x, minus three acting at a distance of x minus two. Remember, this distance right here would be the whole distance x minus the distance x uh, of two. So this distance is x minus two. That gives you the distance between the break, where we're summing our moments, and this three pound load. And now I have this equal to m. So m equals x plus six. In the third piece, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take the sum of the moments at the break. I'll have four acting at a distance of x. My three pound load is still acting at a distance of x minus two in the opposite direction. My six pound load also acts in the opposite direction. It acts at a distance of x minus four. This distance between the break and that six pound load is x minus four. And then I have m acting in the same counterclockwise direction as my three pound load and my six pound load. That sums to m equals minus five x plus 30. Now I wanna graph them. If I graph the end diagram, life is very simple. From zero to six feet, n is equal to zero. So that takes care of that one. If I graph the v diagram, I've got v in units of pounds, x in units of feet. And if I mark off some distances here, that's my six feet of my beam. So this is four and this is two. Between zero and two, V is equal to four pounds. At two, between two and four, V is equal to one pound. And between four and six, V is equal to minus five. You can connect them if you want to or not if you don't. That's my V diagram. My M diagram is in units of foot pounds. If I graph my same six feet, 
Between 0 and 2, I have a slope of 4x. m is equal to 4x. That gets me up to a value of 8 foot-pounds. Between 2 and 4, I have a slope of only 1. This is my line x plus 6. That takes me up to 10. Note, if you were to continue this line down, you would get to a y-intercept of 6. But that we can't continue that line because our values for m are only valid between 0 and 2, between 2 and 4, and between 4 and 6. Between 4 and 6, I have a negative slope. I have minus 5x plus 30. So if, again, if I continued this slope up until it met the x the y-axis, the m-axis, I would get to a value of 30. Double check that, in fact, your moment does end up at zero, and you're all set. If you were asking yourself if this were to break or not, your maximum absolute value of v is 5 pounds between x equals 4 and x equals 6. Your maximum absolute value of the moment is 10 foot-pounds at x equals 4.